Oh, oh, so 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 again. Good morning here oh, and good morning. and uh, good afternoon there. Good afternoon. Good morning. <laughs> good morning for you. Yes, I'm. Uh, uh, I think it's a kind of exciting part of my life in that I'm beginning to understand what Zen is. <laughs> at least, at least I think I do. So th there's a saying that after 80, maybe going to 90, you begin to understand, okay? <laughs> but it's, well, it's well worth the trip and you have to invest in it as the most essential thing in your life. It will save your life. You just look around the world, uh, the, it's really bad. We're in a dire situation. I, I lost my faith in politics. Yeah, yeah I, it, and even uh, there was a shortage of baby food in America. The affluency of America, they, they, the, the company Gerber, Gerber's Baby Food. What did people do before Gerber's Baby Food came out? We fed our children mouth to mouth. We chewed it. And sometimes I swallowed it because it tastes so good. And then we transmitted it mouth to mouth. It, don't you remember? That's how we did it before technology. I mean, not that we have to do it again, but we should know where our roots come from. And this is the whole thing about Zen, where our real roots of origin comes from because it will free you from greed, anger, and ignorance, which the whole world is turned upside down and facing right now, okay? So here I am and there you are. It's good to see Skull Hulk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it brings back many memories. But anyway, um, today's talk will be on uh, Fukan Zazengi, but just, just the phrase of it, and uh, maybe one of the most important phrases. And when I, when I, you know, even being Chinese, I'm foreign to the Japanese culture, just like you are, and the names and things, and the kanji all, get me all mixed up. But if you, when you read it and you, you have some kind of, a quest and resolve to find out, you know, who you are, or what this world is all about. You will continue to do it because that's the most important thing you could do in this life. So Fu San Sata Kengi is, uh, and translations matter a lot because I saw it as the uh, universal recommendation of uh, Zazen, the principles of Zazen. But Do this is a writing by Dogen, and he was not trying to promote it. It would be the recommendation of the principles of Zazen. Not trying to, we are not trying to promote anything, okay? All right, so Fusan Sazarenki. And um, we talk about Zen, Zazen, that's the most important part. So let's see, here's a, uh, there's a phrase down maybe three, three or four paragraphs down. It says uh, from the translation, cease intellectual understanding. Ah, now we, we can give a sense of sigh of relief. We didn't have to, it's, no, it's not necessary to think and you'll, you, you're still alive, you know? You know, isn't it at a relief? You just relax, relax a little bit. No, no, no thinking. Just, just follow the the notes of the song that's being played. Seize intellectual understanding, and learn the backward step. You no, know, so everything we've been doing or condition, education, tradition parents, etc. It's been the forward step, right? <laughs> the forward step is you're going to get something and you're going to gain something and you're going to be happy. But this is not true. The world would be a, a, a superfluous, happy 
enjoyable place, but it's not. So, okay, cease, let go. Let go of your intellectual understanding and learn the backward step, which turns your light inward. So this is, this is not an assumption, but it's an affirmation or confirmation that you have the light. In other words, it wouldn't be said, turn your light inward to illuminate yourself. And then it says, body and mind drop off. See, that's scary <laughs> to, to have your body and mind drop off. But I was, when I first read that, I was scared. I, you know, what will happen to my body and mind drop? It's the idea that we form of what your, my and your body and mind is about, okay? So the idea drops away. And when the idea drops away, you, you will experience and see yourself, your true nature. And as, well, as, as the translator keeps going, uh, body and mind will drop away of, the, of themselves. You don't have to do anything. All you do is turn your light inward. You don't try to make anything. We're not trying to create anything. And the body and mind will naturally drop away of themselves. It's spontaneous because your, your presence and awareness is there. So naturally, it, the idea of the body and mind drops off. Isn't, isn't that, you? everyone follow me? Huh? Is it easy to follow? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the difficult part is to do it. But we have no choice but to do it. And some, some, something within yourself, that precious essential self will do it for you because you are taking the backward step and because you are ceasing from promoting that intellectual understanding and pursuit, wanting and escaping from things, right? So, you know, Zazen is a very interesting thing because we're not wanting. In fact, uh, well, like I said before, the wanting and gaining and getting and pushing away are things what we've been taught. But in Zazen, especially in Sashin, you are uh, participating in the action or the activity of loss. You are choosing it. Now, who, who would want to choose loss? But Zen is about loss. Because the more you lose, the more you gain. <laughs> so it's the opposite. We try to gain, but we get less and less. But when you lose everything, especially your intellectual ideas and thinking, then you gain everything. It, it's, it's interesting. This is the backward step, OK? And of course, your original face will naturally manifest of itself. It means you have it. And it says, if you wish to attain suchness, you should practice suchness without delay. So uh, the time Dogen wrote this, it was a reformation in uh, Japan. There are many new religions that, that came from China that people want to expose. So he was very careful in, uh, 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 he wasn't really welcome either because he was the young kid on the block. And, and he had a different kind of meditation that, that Japan did not have before. And there were other traditions. So, and he was not competing. We, don't, we do not compete with anyone. That's foolish. That's our intellectual thinking. All we do is we give up our greed, anger, and ignorance. There's no competition. Isn't that something? So he was not competing, but they were actually even after him because he was the new kid on the block with new ideas. And maybe he was too, too uh, strong of a person. I'm not strong, but the belief in him shined. It was without doubt. 
So, um, yeah. So let me see. I was going to go into Rio Khan's poem about exactly this. But before that, ah, there's uh, the backward step. In our tradition, it's called Echo Hensho. Okay? Echo Hensho. And uh, So the usual, it's a Chinese expression. And the usual translation is turn the light inward and you will illuminate yourself. But the literal translation is eh means to turn because our light goes this way, out all the time. <laughs> that means, um, we're not bad people. <laughs> we were taught that. And everyone else believes that you turn your light out to the objective world. You're always looking out, but you never, Zen is, is really beautiful, you turn your light in. Okay, that's just turning. And uh, eh, ko, ko is light. And the kanji for light is uh, 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 a person holding a torch. So turn the light, it's not even your light. It, it, yours is possessive. The light, it's everyone's light. Turn your light inward. And hen show, in, interesting, it means to return to the illumination. It's not to illuminate yourself, but it's to return the illumination. Isn't that beautiful? Because there's no self. You can't prove there's a self. So this is the true translation of Echo Hensho. And this is our Soto Zen practice. And this poem is uh, really beautiful. And Ryokan is, uh, he was a, a very unusual uh, Zen monk. Um, I, I can't uh, explain or even um, not not just unusual, but uh, very uh, profound. The profundity in his literature and his uh, uh, attitude and uh, demeanor in life. Uh, he played. He would. He he would. He actually he was. Uh, he didn't have a temple. Uh, he didn't even care, care take a temple. All he did was he, he did takohatsu, which means going out and begging. But it's not, it's not. I did it just once, and I got maybe enough to buy a bowl, bowl of noodles, on a cold day. But you, you walk, you walk a lot. And in those days, there weren't, there was not pavement. There was dirt. There was road. There was rain. There was snow. And you were in sandals and your feet were really cold or maybe too hot. But you walked all day and uh, there, there you practice non-discrimination. In Zazen, that's one of the benefits in our Zazen. non impartiality, toji, impartiality. And he's doing it by walking in society. Uh, one time, uh, Mahakashapa uh, was uh, doing takohatsu and uh, he accidentally met Bhimla Kirti on the way. And people, <laughs> all, all the, uh, the great disciples didn't want to meet Bhimla Kirti. They, even Manjusri was afraid he'd be scolded because Manjushri was the, the Buddha at that time. And so, but actually he bumped into uh, uh, Vimla Kirti and Vimla Kirti criticized him. Why, why do you do takohatsu in the poor section of when, when the people are, are not affluent? But you should also do it in the affluent section because you're discriminating. And Vimla Kirti was in the, 
he was very wealthy and he was in the affluent section. So the discrimination, if when you walk, you walk a certain way, you have to go beyond your discrimination. As soon as you get on the airplane, the people look at you as you're going down the aisle. And you, in your mind, you say, I don't like that person. And that person says, I don't like you either. That's discrimination. But, you know, we, we're not going to die. But you, you, that voice comes in and you just, on the exhalation breath, you let it go. And you keep walking into the airplane and take your seat with, with all that. But it's, it's, it, the instances are going by quickly. We, we do not dwell over there, but we're here now and we're here and we're here and we're here. And that's why Zen practice or discipline is very important. You come into to the Skahalt Zendo with your foot not near, not near or facing the altar. And when you leave, you leave with the foot furthest away from, from the altar. It, it means all these disciplines that you are here. I put my shoes, I didn't throw them down, but I put my shoes here. I was there. I was here. You know, that's the whole idea. Drink, drink some water with two hands. One hand is, you know, hey, <laughs> here I am again. <laughs> You know, but two hands, maybe you're not here. Do you understand? Okay. So here we are. The poem. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I want to finish the last, the paragraph, the full paragraph. Body and mind, the idea of body and mind, because you're turning the light inward, the idea of body and mind will drop off. You'll, you'll forget it. You'll forget the idea. The polarity is not there. Okay? And then when that happens, your original mind will manifest of itself naturally if you wish to attain suchness you should practice suchness without delay now he he was uh using the word suchness because he's introducing meditation to japan uh, zazen to japan in a different way than it was before so he didn't say emptiness because that would be a little bit people may be uh, maybe identify with nihilism, which is actually nothing. But he said suchness. And uh, emptiness is not void. It's, it's empty, but suffused with knowing. It's not just nothing. Emptiness is suffused with knowing. Cognizance. And that cognizance is interdependent related to all things. So it's not nihilism, not nothing. Okay? Okay. Any questions so far? Did, well, this half, is this half the time already? Yeah, I think so. Can you hear us? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I have to come back, huh? I, I would like to come back, okay? For the second, well, for the second talk to finish this up. Okay, but here's here's the poem. Oh, Ryokan. So so here you are walking, and uh, you you come in. Well, I remember walking one time. I came. It, it was all new to me, and we were at Suzuki Roshi's temple, and um, they gave us these the 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 hat, the big straw hat. And, and on, on the hat was Rinzo in, meaning Suzuki Roshi's temple. And, and it took a long time to dress. In fact, I couldn't do it myself. You had these leggings and it just took a, a very long time. But anyway, uh, maybe there's a reason for that. It takes a long time, okay? It's like your transition into, from, from the temple into 
from from uh, a very quiet life into the broiler. <laughs> so it's you you walk out, and people at the temple they all wave goodbye to you. <laughs> you walk out, and you you walk on the left side of the street and you chant. And each door you pass, you you must go to each door, no matter if it's affluent or if it's poor, or or even if it's a bank. Banks usually don't give money. <laughs> that's, that's why they're, they're the bank, okay? So, but there's no discrimination. You have to be careful not to disturb, not to be in anyone's way on the street, left side. When someone gives you something, you'd say, ho, meaning Dharma, and you go to the next one, next one. Okay, so anyway, this is just part of what Ryokan did, but this is the poem on one time he did Taco Hatsu. Okay? So, a finishing Taco Hatsu in a desolate village. I return to my hermitage with its green, mossy rock. As the evening sun sets behind the western ridge, the pale moon is reflected in the stream before my hut. I wash my feet and ascend the rock, burn incense and sit peacefully in Zazen. Also, a child of Buddha Sangha, how can I spend years passing in vain? That's his poem, really simple, very simple, but yet so profound. And this, this demonstrates Echo Hensho. So Echo Hensho is uh, three, three parts that happens in the universe. And that universe includes our Zazen. All, all this is referring to your zazen, to my zazen, okay? There's three parts to do. And so when the sun sets, like, like in Sashin, your sun is setting. You're becoming exhausted. Your thoughts, your body, everything is becoming exhausted. In fact, it's like, when the sun sets in the west, uh, as it sets, it illuminates. Uh, it's, it's not a sunset. We're not talking about sunset. We're talking about when the sun has set, has set, there's the, an illumination that comes out from the sun that illuminates the entire universe. You've seen this before, right? And and this is where artists and uh, photographers uh, go and take pictures because the light is a certain way. But this is not just about beauty. It's very beautiful and wondrous point in time. But the sun has to set before you see this. Like we do in, in Sashin or in Zazen. The sun, the self, the discriminating mind is setting. And therefore, this beautiful light comes out. And the beauty is not just beauty itself, but it's about the perfection of your Zazen. It's being completed. But you don't know it. And that's why you like to sit. Because you don't know it because it's not an object. Isn't that something? That's why people like to sit. But you keep on sitting, but some, but you're yet to realize it. And that's why you need a teacher, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, that's that was it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's one uh, that's one explanation of Echo Hensho and as it relates to the universe, to the principles of the universe, 
uh, sun rises in the east, sunsets in the west. And it's just the opposite, but it's the same thing. Before the sun rise, it's, it's, it's called dawn. That's interesting. It, dawn it means awakening. Before we the sun, but actually the sun, the sun is actually still, and it's the earth that's going around. So so the sun remains uninterrupted as the earth, as we're we we're spinning around. So we say the sun rises, the sun sets, but it's just there. But that's from our perspective. The sun does not move, but it hasn't yet arisen yet. It hasn't yet dawned. The sun rises in the east. The sun sets in the west. That quite a beautiful analogy, don't you think? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's really uh, bright and beautiful. And and you know when you when this is being uh, said, you you begin to wonder how many instances like this in our world, our real world of impermanency, does this happen, but we're not there, we're not present to witness it, or not to witness it, but to experience it. And at the end of, end of his poem, he says, how, how could I live this life in vain? Because these instances are happening instant after, it's continuous. The second, uh, the second echo hand show I experienced when my father died, and probably hospice people or when you've been with the person who who has died. Uh, I went to the visit. This was year many many years ago. I went to visit my dad in the hospital, and he actually my dad was a, a Chinese doctor, so I could imagine uh, how. Uh, unhappy of a situation he was in because he's Chinese medicine. Now he's in, in a Western hospital. Uh, but at that time, when I visited him with my other brothers, he looked like he could have gotten up out of bed. He was bright and clear, vividly clear. It's true, isn't it? When you visit people who are going to die. So that, that explains, it's the same life force that's innately within ourselves that comes out at when our going to die also means your ego is going down. The sun is going down. It happens like that. It's, isn't that interesting? It's interesting and beautiful. So as practitioners, we have an additional um, source when that... When we're dying on our exhalation breath, we're returning to suchness or emptiness. We're practicing it every time we exhale. Your last breath is on the exhalation, but we know where we're going. Okay. So, so I, I, that, that kind of helped me understand when my father died, what happened. And of course, the second one, is uh, the third one is like on the third day of session I always forget to mention that that uh, uh, in a traditional session seven day session on the third day and and if you have a three day session maybe it's on this on the uh, first or second day but you can just adjust it and even if you have a one day session you can adjust it but you get what I'm trying to say on the third day because your discriminating mind and your body are, are, have gone through a kind of hell, then something, you get second wind. That means that life force, the Buddha nature, the, the life force of the Buddha nature is apparently there. It's really there. Just that we have to allow it to open of itself. Okay, so that's <laughs> that. I'm very happy to uh, begin to understand <laughs> what Zen is, and uh, it's it's all within yourself. And and 
and your understanding and your practice of continuing it. Uh, one, uh, I think Tendo Nyojo Dogen's teacher said that it's not the zazen so much, but it's the resolve, the commitment not to give up zazen. And look at, you, you know, I'm, I'm over 80, I'm going to 90 now, but I can't sit cross-legged anymore. So does that mean that people over 60 can't sit anymore? You, you don't think that way because you should sit even more so because we are going to die. That's, that's what it comes down to. But, but there could be many births before we die or as we die, there are births. But, but so I have to sit in a chair, but that's the most important thing. Uh, I have a saying for people in our community, when you're over 60, we have benefits. <laughs> we can sit in a chair and we don't have to follow that horrendous schedule that, that you young guys have to do, okay? So um, what I'm saying is you get old, that's even more important to sit. And the resolve, the commitment to sit, you, you can't escape from Buddha's, you're in the palm of Buddha's hand. There's nowhere to go. You think you're going somewhere, but there's nowhere to go because we're all in the palm of Buddha's hand. Okay, it's 10.01 from here. So, so like, uh, we have time for some questions, huh? We, we have actually time. If you, if you want, we have uh, more time. Uh-oh, I'm scared. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it's, it's up to you, of course, but... Uh, no, no, I, I, I'll be happy to be with you. It doesn't have to be exactly <laughs> half an hour, so if... <laughs> or I'm afraid to be with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, please. And, and when you ask a question, say your name, and so I can see what your face looks like, okay? Thank you. Rosie. Yes. It's Sankey. But where, where does your body land when it drops off? Don't, don't <laughs> investigate that. Your mind is still going. Just where does it land? Don't worry. Everything is taken care of. Look at I'm still alive. You know, because that's your ego. Where does it go? You know, who knows where it goes? It doesn't matter where it goes. But, but, you know, it will do, it will keep on asking you questions like that. It's job, it's attribute. Your ego, your small self is to imprison you. It's to bond you. It's to fool you. You, you know, even myself over 80, when I get up in the morning, I, I, I find myself in a hurry to get to Zaza and I said, hey, you know, this is not good. And I bet you find yourself the same way. You don't end up feeling the, the texture in your clothing or when you put on something, it feels good. I'm, I'm sure you do. So I, I have to practice more. That's what practice is. Not to be in a hurry. Or if you're in a hurry, know that you're in a hurry and be in a hurry. But when you don't know it, that's the worst. That that's the perfection of practice. Not not like someone just just goes right through everything like per perfection. But the perfection includes the imperfection. We begin recognizing our own imperfection. Okay. It's Kimio here. <clears throat> Kimio, yes. Hi. <laughs> Hi. It's always an inspiration and encouragement to hear you talk and especially to hear you and to feel your strength and I forget now. Oh, and get now. Yeah. 
and, and yes, encouragement. Yes. How to, you're always ready to continue. Yeah, I. And, yeah, I'm surprised. I'm. I'm. I feel like I'm stronger than I was when I was thirty or forty. <laughs> Even oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And your commitment to Sassen is really an inspiration to me during the years. And you never give it. Thank you so much, Rosie. Yeah. I'm so so the the inspiration and encouragement is for you to do, do the same for you and the whole universe. That's what we do. Hi, Josetsu here. Yeah, Hello, Josetsu. can you see me? Yes. yes. Hi. Um, <clears throat> if body and mind falls away, uh, does it happen once? <laughs> Even the Buddha, it didn't just happen once. It maybe happened many, many times. I mean, boy, that would be a, a, a great, the greatest Buddha, just one time, and it's all gone. We're all finished. But things change, you know? So, so, so completion or perfection means it includes, you, you know, what was the monk? Uh, rake, rake all the leaves on the tree, and he was really proud of his work after Samu. And he, he told the teacher how how proud he was. And the teacher came out and looked, and the ground was perfectly raked. There wasn't one leaf on the ground. And the the teacher took the trunk and shook it, and some leaves fell down. Now it's okay. So it's not just once. It the, we're not counting numbers. The thinking mind is is counting the numbers. We're not into numbers now. The light is turned inward. If you turn outwards, we're into numbers. How many enlightenments did you get? <laughs> How many sessions did you sit? <laughs> did you move or not? I mean, those are all failing questions for us. And because we failed so many times, it's got you. And, and we go over the same thing over and over again our entire life. Don't you know that that whatever that person is, it's got nothing good to say for us, nothing beneficial. That's how you know it's not yourself. Okay, I, I want to ask Brander, uh, where are you? Since he's he's going to translate some of my talks. So, Brenner, do you have a question? <laughs> they, they, say, they, they, say, they say that uh, a person who writes about his teacher or translates his teacher, they, sh they should know the person's shikantaza, how the person sits. That, that's it. That's the bottom line. Yeah, and it's, it's, uh, it's felt like uh, I was sitting uh, next to you while I was translating. So it's been like, uh, it's been uh, very intimate to translate your uh, work. We yeah, have, yes. uh, in Icelandic, it's, uh, we say, uh, it's uh, sitting on, the, on your master's uh, like bed, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I have many questions from the from the translation, but uh, right now I'm kind of empty. Which may be good. <laughs> yeah. Rosie. Yes. It's thank you again. I, I just remember when I was first, uh, the first time I, I met you, I was very afraid uh, and uh, I was uh, surprised uh, when we started to talk that you, you were very kind and, and very humorous. And <laughs> 
because it was my idea at the time that uh, sandmasters were all a certain in a certain way and they would scold you and and they would do this and yeah. that and, and and but i was even surprised that you drank coffee and and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was and, probably smoking then too huh <laughs> well i don't remember but may, maybe you remember because i i used to ask a lot of questions i i asked and i asked and i think i remember one time you said that that, that, that's enough, no more questions. And then there was a pause, <laughs> there was a pause, and then you said, okay, one more. <laughs> <laughs> because you said I was asking questions for the, the others too, that, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. didn't ask questions. What day, uh, Sashin, how many days, Sashin, are you people at Skull Hall? Four days. Four days. Four days. What day is today? Second. Uh, second day. Second. It's the second day. The third day tomorrow. Oh, the second day. Hey, maybe, maybe this is the second win, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the third day of a seven-day session. Right. Yeah, when you I, say, can, yeah, go ahead. can I ask another question? Yes. When you sit, Sasan, and you sit and you sit and you sit, and um, the light that should be shining inward seems to be out, seems to be no light. How, how can you just turn it on? <laughs> Well, it, it's just that you have to, you have to let the sun set and, and you can do it by breathing. You, you, you know, the Tanden Kikai breathing, the breath controls the mind, the mind controls the body. These, these are ancient words. So the breathing Tanden, Tanden Kikai, the Tanden, there's three power spots in the body. One is beneath your navel. That's the tanden kikai. Tanden, I think, is two fingers and a half beneath your navel. And the kikai is two, two, an inch and a half. And that exists right in, in the tan. Tanden means feel your humanities field of essence. And kikai, ki is uh, uh, spirit. Vitality, energy, Kai's ocean, the ocean of vitality exists within your field of essence. This is for humanity. And then another one is here in the chest. Uh, in the West, when we say this area, it means more passion or emotion, but it's, it's, it's before the passion emotion. And then there's one in the forehead. I remember Suzuki Roshi when he offers incense, he, he puts the lit end uh, to his forehead. And by doing that, and he probably uh, uh, motions the, the uh, kanji uh, shin, one, two, three, four, four, five strokes as he does that. And it stimulates this area. Okay, so those are three areas. But in Zaza, we put the emphasis on the Tanden Kikai. And, and you, uh, you, uh, Yasin Khan, uh, Hakuin's writing, you can even Google it. You, you should read it. And actually, uh, he was a very a Rinzai, illustrious Zen master. And he, uh, well, he, made, he, he uh, made up a story that, oh, oh he got consumption in those days so you all these the, the, our past history these these kids they were 18 20 21 22 these young monks they threw themselves into zazen they didn't eat they didn't sleep so they got consumption the heat went up into their lungs we, we call it tuberculosis now they got it and a lot of them died those were our heroes 
in the past. It just, Zen just didn't come all of a sudden. And so he, he also, he got consumption. So he said in the story, Asin Kana, was that he went to visit a sage who lived in, in the mountain <laughs> that was over a couple of hundred years old. But actually he just made up the story and he found out how to cure himself of tuberculosis. Now I'm not saying, uh, someone asked me, you mean you can cure it by doing, I'm not uh, advocating, if you breathe this, you'll cure yourself of tuberculosis, but I'm trying to adapt it to our current situation, emotional situation, because all, uh, there's so many applicants uh, that I've, I haven't seen before that when they uh, become members, they have lots of anxiety. There's, there's more stress. I mean, this is really a bad, bad, dire time. But the good, I think the goodness of it is that it will make people look inside. There's a Chinese saying that when things are so bad outside, you have to start looking inside. So, so that means also the heat, your heat is going up because you, you have no foundation of the zaza, you're not settled. So your heat will go up and by breathing, you will bring it back down. But what is it? Heat, excessive thinking, worry, migraine. I mean, the list goes on and on. It's not these, you take these pills and they'll do it, but they have a lot of side effects. But just simple breathing, simple mouth feeding, mouth to mouth, breath to breath. Like, and use these traditional methods, which is beyond time and space to now. And many people are, are uh, even practitioners are worried about these times and they're really upset. But if you have a strong foundation from your, of course, I'm still worried, but not as worried as most people. That's, it's really upsetting their lives. You're making a foundation in zazen. So the breathing, you're you're turning the breathing down. So the old saying was that you from the navel up, you keep it cool, not hot. You don't make it hot. Hot makes headaches, worries, migraine. Okay, you keep the energy go down. You keep it warm from the from the navel to your feet. Breathing is very important. And, and you know, the, that thing about Gasho, uh, I just want to say this to everybody because there's a lot of people there that, that maybe don't, haven't seen this. But anyway, when you, when you Gasho, as you, at the end of the exhalation, your thinking mind has stopped and you come up with that spaciousness. And when you want to concentrate when you're in Gasho, look at your tips of the middle finger and there's a sense of composure. So, so Zazen, you know, um, em emptiness, uh, formlessness is the non-arising, is non-arising. This is non-arising. Okay, thank you.